Okay, so let's let's try to understand this. <clears throat> when the Rebetzin said, of course the library belongs to the Chassidim and not to my father, because my father himself no, belonged to the Chassidim. Which practically means my father doesn't have private property. It can't belong to him. Nothing belongs to him. He belongs to the Chassidim. <clears throat> so it can't be his private property. That was that was the practical answer to them. She couldn't. Oh. Huh? Why couldn't she say that straight out? Why'd she have to bring that quote, like for them to figure it out? Well, they did figure it out, and they and they panicked. Right. But obviously they'll, they'll figure it out. But, like, but, but the truth is that. that she was saying something much more than just. And just the legal issue that a Rebbe belongs to his Chassidim. Nobody ever said that before. It's like something new that came out of the situation, which we never, we never knew before. What does it mean that a Rebbe belongs to the Chassidim? He's devoted to his Chassidim. He's he a Rebbe. loves his Chassidim. What does that mean? He belongs to the Chassidim. Because a rabbi belongs to his Chassidim. What does that mean? It means what I said. <laughs> <laughs> so, two things. <laughs> the fact that the, the fact that the um, that the Svarim were being stolen, that they were being taken, that they were being treated like private property of the family, it means that you don't understand what Svarim are to a Rebbe. So the first thing we learned is how precious Svarim are a library is to a Rebbe. That by by taking away the Svarim and holding them hostage, so to speak, you're actually putting the Rebbe into prison. Because the Rebbe is so attached to the Svarim that if they're in prison, then the Rebbe is in prison. So selling the Svarim is almost like selling the Rebbe. So that was one thing we learned that we didn't really appreciate or understand before. <clears throat> it's also like if you, if you mistreat a Sefer, are you not also mistreating the one who wrote the Sefer? No. Because if the person who wrote the Sefer put his heart and soul into it, then it's literally like mistreating the writer, the author. On the positive side, when you're reading the Sefer and you're quoting it, it's like you're hearing it from the author. It's like the author is speaking to you. So in the negative side, if you abuse the Sefer, it's like you're abusing the author. But that's only if the author really puts his neshama into the Sefer. It's not like just some professor who writes a book. A Sefer is different. So every holy Sefer, somebody with a holy neshama revealed something new in, in godliness and elokus, and now you're abusing the Sefer. It's like it, it's abusing holiness, godliness.
And the second thing we learned was the relationship between the Rebbe and Chassidim. So one of the unusual things about that whole event is that the Rebbe spoke about it publicly. You would think this is a family problem. It should be kept private. You have to go to court, go to court, talk about it by a fabrenian. Why does every chosid have to know what's going on in the family uh, politics? And the Rebbe spoke about it every Shabbos. With such details. I think the Rebbe said, he hates me. I mean, why does this have to be made public? So, <clears throat> What we, what we saw from that is that talking to Chassidim is to the Rebbe not talking to the public. This is his family. Every Chassid standing at the Fabrenian is the Rebbe's family and this is a family problem. So everyone in the family needs to know what's going on. Even though we still don't know what's going on. A lot of it was still like a little mysterious. But the Rebbe treated it like we have a problem. In that sense, the Rebbe belongs to Chassidim. It's more than the Rebbe loves Chassidim. You can love strangers. You don't share family problems with strangers. You can be very devoted to chassidim, but that doesn't mean that you're going to involve them in a family issue. But when the Rebbe involved all of us personally in such a personal issue, that showed that there is a closer relationship between chassidim and Rebbe than we, than we suspected. It wasn't, it wasn't a simple question. I mean, it was, everybody knew this was the Friedrich Rebbe's library. Doesn't that mean that it belongs to him? Not yeah. Grandchildren. It certainly sounds like it, no? Yeah, but not for well, his to sell it. Well, if it belongs to him, then his grandchildren inherit it when he passes away. Even if the daughter came first. So good, now it's hers, and she's giving it to her grandson, to her son. As, as but isn't it the oldest? First? She's the oldest. So, it was not such a simple, obvious thing. And it took hours and hours and days of debating and arguing and proving and bringing documents. And then even How on the, the other end. Side get, what type of documents did the other side get? There was no documents to get. I'm sure there were. Where it, where it says the Rebbe's library. Did it ever um, um, clearly declare that um, um, there was a document that it belongs to the grandson? Didn't like, have to. All he had to prove is that it belongs to the Rebbe, so the grandson gets it automatically. Wait, but if he was supposed to inherit it, then why was, like, who, according to the Tyra, he was, the grandson was supposed to get it, so why? If it belonged to the Fidic Rebbe. I didn't want to. So the real question is, if they really felt that it belongs to them, why were they stealing it at night? Because mm-hmm. they know that they're not going to watch. So they know that they're going to have no chance. How did they find out? The book cameras. Mm-hmm. Because they were self becoming empty. Mm-hmm. So they put in a camera, and they saw it at night when nobody was looking. He went in, and he took a safer, and he took two or three. He didn't bother, he didn't bother looking for cameras? Was there cameras? Wait, of course in. there were, because then... That's how they figured when, it out. When yeah. they realized that some sort of were missing, they put in cameras. 
But, but um, he didn't bother looking for cameras. Yeah, but if you went in the day, then all of a sudden would attack him. Or oh, say, why? What are you doing? Why are you opening the glass? I don't think there was him. So why, why didn't they just take them? And if anybody asks, they'll say it's mine. Then look, attack you. They'll say, excuse mm -hmm. us. Excuse he could have just seen you. If it was that simple, at Quirk, it would just said mine. It's mine. He, he probably said right. they would have done it. Done so he probably did do it. I guess they, they did know that there was something not so right about it. That they had to smuggle it out at night. Anyway. <clears throat> What does that have to do with us? I think the question that we should ask is, what does this have to do with Mashiach? Can you imagine somebody saying, after the Alta Rebbe, somebody was saying, okay, that's it. That's the end of Chassidus. We have a Tanya, we have um, a few Maimorim from the Alta Rebbe, but it's over. What about the middle of Rebbe? You know, he's he's not like the Alter Rebbe. Because Alter Rebbe already did. I thought brought it in. You don't need to bring it in twice. Once Can you in, imagine it's in. somebody saying that? You know, the Mikkel Rebbe is not as great as the Alter Rebbe, so it's all downhill now. Imagine somebody saying after the Tzemach Tzedek. After, after the middle of Rebbe, saying, okay, so there's no son to take over, so it's finished. Well, there's a son-in-law. Yeah, but a son-in-law is not, you know. And then after the Friedrich Rebbe, can you imagine them saying, <laughs> you had no sons, it's not Europe anymore, the whole, the whole community in Russia was destroyed. It's finished. In a sense, that's what they were saying. They were saying that after the Friedrich Rebbe, Chabad is finished. Who was saying that? His grandson? Mm -hmm. Why? So that's why he was stealing them? The fact that there was a challenge to uh, who does the library belong to, was in a sense saying, there are no chassidim anymore, there's no rebbe anymore. So who gets the swara? Me. The family. If there were no um, chassidim, they didn't need to go in the night. They didn't need to go in the night. That question's always going to come back up. So what was really the issue? The real issue was, did chassidus end? Or not? And of course the answer is no. So when the judge ruled that the Svaram belonged to Chassidim, it meant there are Chassidim and there is a Rebbe and nothing ended. So that was a huge, huge victory. So it wasn't just a court case and we won. What does it have to do with Mashiach? Obviously, if Chassidus ended before Mashiach comes, how are we going to bring Mashiach? Mashiach comes when we spread Chassidus. If Chassidus is over... I guess they didn't acknowledge it. So this was like the Sultan creating the last challenge or the last resistance to Mashiach.